In this video, we're gonna create this cool animated SVG slider showing these dogs. It's responsive and it's got that nifty overlay. I'm Jack Harrington, at Jahur on Twitter, and I also YouTube as the Blue Collar Coder. And this is a collaboration video with First Web Designer. So this is actually the first of two videos on this. In the first one, we're gonna create a static slider that just shows three hard-coded dogs. And then in the next video, we are going to make it dynamic and attach it to a web service. Now, before I begin, we're gonna be using four different technologies here, HTML, CSS, SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics, and that's gonna give us that responsive, nice layout system with the overlay and everything else. And then vanilla JavaScript, without any kind of framework. All right, let's jump into the code. So on the left-hand side, we've got a terminal, and then on the right-hand side, we've got Chrome showing a finished version of this project in a device view, and that allows you to emulate mobile in this case, like the iPhone X. All you need to do is tap on the image to slide to the next one, and the name and also the little tagline changes out depending on the dog. So we're gonna create a new directory called dog slider and then change directory to that directory. And then we're gonna use the touch command to create index.html and also index.css. And then use code, which is installed by Visual Studio Code to bring up VS Code in the current directory. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a little HTML here. Start by adding the HTML tag, and then within that a head tag and a link to the CSS, so I'm gonna create rel equals stylesheet, and then give it href and index.css, and that's going to bring in the CSS. And then create a simple body that says hello. So to try this out, I'm gonna try the live server extension, which is free. I've already got that installed. And that brings up a server for the project. So I'll click on the little go live button that it's installed down here. And that's gonna bring up our page. And now I can bring up the inspector. And this little button down here is gonna move it into and out of device mode. And we wanna be on a device because we wanna show how this is gonna look in mobile. Now I've selected iPhone X, but you can select whatever you want. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of CSS, just to make this look nicer. So we'll create a body tag with zero padding and zero margin. And then set the font family to Arial. And then for an H1, we'll just add a little padding around it. Now we'll go back into the HTML and add an H1 above and below. And that just shows you where the margins of the slider are. And now we get to create our SVG tag. So the first thing we're gonna define is that the width is going to be 100%. It's gonna take up the entire horizontal width of the page. And then we're gonna define a view box. And a view box is a virtual coordinate space. So it says within the confines of the SVG, the coordinate system starts at zero, zero, up in the upper left-hand corner and ends at 160 in the lower right-hand corner. And then I'm gonna give it an ID of carousel because we'll be using JavaScript on it later. Now the first thing we wanna do is add an image. So I'm gonna say that this has an ID of image zero. Its X and Y are zero. Its width is 100. And now what that means is Regardless of the size of the window itself, it is going to take up the entire space because our virtual coordinate system is 100 wide and 60 high. So if the width is 100, then it's gonna take up the entire space. Then I'm gonna give it a class of dog image, which we have yet to define. And then the href of placedog.net. And then I'm gonna give it 900 pixels wide and an ID of 25. Oh, that is cute. Look at that dog. That is, that's a really cute little dog. Okay. So let's copy and paste that a few times. 
and change out the ID to image one and image two, and then change out the href to give it different dogs. So I'm gonna say 26 and 27. And now what's happened is that the last one has overlaid on top of the first two. So just to show you that those are there, let's go change the X to 30 and then 60. And now you can kind of see them side by side. And in reality, those are gonna be stacked horizontally. So the first one's gonna be at 100, and the second one's going to be at 200. So they're just essentially sitting there off screen. So now let's go and open a script tag and start by defining an array of dogs. And each dog is going to have an object and within that object, an image key. And then that image key is going to be the element for that image. So we'll use document get element by ID and then give it the ID that we used before. So in this case, image zero for the first dog. And then we'll give the dog a name, call the first one Oso, give the text best dog on the planet. And then we'll copy and paste that two more times. Change out the ID to image one and image two. And then change out the names and the text. You can put in there whatever you want. Now the next thing to do is set that our current slide is zero. And we're gonna use let in that case because we wanna be able to change the value of current as we click on those images. Then we'll create a new function called update. It's not going to take any arguments, but it is going to iterate through all the dogs and change their horizontal position based on the value of the current variable. So we'll start with dogs and then we'll go for each and that's going to give us a dog. So we will go and get from that the image as well as the index as a second parameter. And then from there, we set the image x base val dot value, so that's the current value of x, to the current position times negative 100, so that's gonna offset it backwards, plus the current index, which is whatever image we're looking at, times 100, so that's gonna shift things depending on what current is, but keep them stacked 100 apart as they go out horizontally. Now let's call that. And now it's still running, looks good. So now we need a click handler. So we're gonna do document.getElementById and then give it carousel. And then we're gonna say add event handler on that. And look for the click event. And then give it a callback. And in this case, we're just gonna say that we want to add one to the current value. And if current is greater than or equal to the number of dogs, we set current to zero. And then we call update again. And now let's click on that. And as you can see, it goes through all the images, which is great, but it does that instantaneously. What we want is a nice little transition. So let's go back into our CSS and create a class definition for dog image and then add transition where we want any value changing, so all. We'll get a 400 millisecond transition that eases in and out. And then we also wanna set the pointer events to none. And that's going to let the click event pass through the image and back up to the carousel. We actually have multiple layers of elements here, so we wanna add pointer events none to almost all of them. And now as we click, you can see that you get a nice little animation. So the next thing we wanna do is add the text value at the bottom. So I'm gonna create a new text element and give it the ID of dog text with an X of five and a Y of 58.5. And where the style has a font family of Arial, a font size of five points, a font weight of bold is filled in white and again has that pointer events set to none. So let's go grab dog text and then jump down here and say document.getElementById. Give it that dog text and then say that we want the inner HTML 
to be the text value of the current dog. There you go. I guess that dog is the best dog on the planet. Okay, so let's continue on with our overlay. Now, right below the last image, we're gonna create a new rectangle. And we're gonna say that its X starts at 2.5, as does its Y. It has a width of 95. Now, Y 95? Well, that's 100 minus 2.5 times two, so five. So 100 minus five is 95. And we want a height of 50. And we'll put an RX on it, which gives it a radius. And then we'll set a style where you fill it with a 70% opaque white. And again, set that pointer events to none. All right, so we got a nice little overlay and we can still click through it. That's great. So what we want to do now is mask that. So we're going to go up to the top and create a new definition. So we'll create a defs tag. And within that, a mask. We'll give it the ID of mask. And then we'll grab that initial rectangle that we had and place that in the mask. But in this case, we'll fill it with pure white and we can get rid of pointer events. And that's going to say that we want to include that section in the mask. Anything white is going to get included. Anything black is going to get excluded. So now we'll drop down back to the rectangle and we'll add a mask and give it the URL of hash mask. And that's going to refer to the mask that we put in the definitions. So now we want to cut out a piece of that. So we need to paint essentially in black the piece that we want painted out. So we'll copy and paste that rectangle, change the X and Y to five, reduce the width again by five to 90, and then the height to 30, and then fill that in black. And now we have a nice little cutout. And we can even do the same thing with a piece of text. So let's go grab the text element and paste it into our mask. And we'll change the ID to dog name. We'll change the X to 10 and the Y to 49. Now I'm gonna change the font family to impact because I've, I've got that. You may not, and that's, that'll fall back onto Arial if you don't have it. I'll change the font size and the fill color. And now we just gotta go set that. So we'll go back down to the JavaScript code and we'll copy and paste the dog text line and change that to dog name and then set the inner HTML to the current dog's name. Oh my, that's a little bit big. So let's go back up there. Ah yeah, that was supposed to be 11 point. That looks much nicer. So you see how that's carved out of there? That's really pretty. Nice use of negative space. So over in the gist, which is linked to in the documentation, there is this gradient fill. So I'm gonna go and copy that. And then paste all that into the mask. And what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to gradient fill the initial rectangle. So I'll go and take the ID from the linear gradient and change the fill to reference the URL of hash box gradient. So now you can see that we got this nice little fade. It goes from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner. And it goes from almost black to almost white, which means almost no opacity to almost, what, 70% opacity, which is the top end of the opacity for that particular rectangle. And you can even have some fun by adding some stops. I'm going to grab the 100% one, paste that, and then grab a 0% and paste that. And so now we've got black, white, white, black, and just change out the offsets to 30%, 60%, and 100%. And now you can see you get this nice effect where you go from black on one corner up to white again, let everything through, and then back down to black again, where you lose that opacity and just a nice little effect there. And there you have it, a nice scrolling dog carousel with an SVG overlay. 
All right, well, there you have it. A super spiffy SVG dog slider. In the next video that's over on my channel, we're gonna go make it dynamic and then connect it to a web service. So I wanna hear from you. What did you like about this? Are you gonna use it as an SVG carousel? Let me know down in the comments down below. And of course, feel free to like and share this with your friends, subscribe to this channel, and also my Blue Collar Coder channel if you like these videos. And in the meantime, as I always say on my channel, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.